In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'm going to describe modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is a special type of arithmetic done on a group of integers that have the property that when you reach the end of that grouping of integers, they wrap around and go back to the beginning of that group of integers. The most common example of this is a 12 hour clock. Consider it being two o'clock, you add five hours, and it's now seven o'clock. So far, simple math. Now it's seven o'clock, add six hours, and it's now one o'clock. That's modulus arithmetic. The mod 12 has been passed, so the value resets and starts at the next integer again. Mathematically, this takes the idea of seven plus six, which is 13. Performing a mod 12 on it gives you the result of one. A common concept that you'll come across when dealing with modular arithmetic is congruence. Congruence is like a lighter version of equals. Consider the following example. This is read as 13 and 1 are congruent modulo 12. 1 divided by 12 is 0, remainder 1. 13 divided by 12 is 1, remainder 1. The remainders are referred to as the modulus, and because the remainders are the same, 13 and 1 are congruent, modulo 12. Of course, this keeps going. Adding 12 to 13 giving you 25, adding 12 again gives you 37, and so on. All of them end up with a remainder of 1, and therefore are congruent. Another way to consider this is two integers are congruent modulo n if n is a whole divisor of their difference. An example might make that mathematically sounding sentence a little easier to grasp. Back to 13 and 1 being congruent mod 12. 13 minus 1 is 12. Because 12 is a whole divisor of 12, 13 and 1 are considered congruent. Doing it again with 25. 25 minus 1 is 24. 24 divided by 12 is 2. Once again, it's a whole number. Therefore, 25 and 1 are congruent, mod 12. The end result of subtracting one number from the other is a whole number divisible by the modulus. Congruence can apply to negatives as well. Consider 2 being congruent to minus 3, modulus 5. Applying the rule from before, 2 minus minus 3 is 5, and of course, 5 is a whole factor of 5. Try it again with minus 8 and 7. Minus 8 minus 7 is minus 15, which is a factor of 5 when you multiply by minus 3. Again, whole number division results in no remainder, so these values are congruent. You can do it with negatives on both sides as well. Minus 3 minus minus 8 gives you 5. Once again, Simple division gives you a whole factor of 5, so minus 3 and minus 8 are congruent, mod 5. That's enough background. Next up, let's see how this works inside of Python. In the previous lesson, I introduced you to modular arithmetic. In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the percent operator to accomplish the same thing in Python. The percent operator is the modulus operator. Just like in the previous lesson, 13 mod 12 is 1. 13 divided by 12 has a remainder of 1, hence the result. There's another one for 15 mod 4, and a bigger value, 240 mod 13. Because the mod operator involves division, you have the same problem if you do a mod by 0 as if you did a divide by 0. You'll get a 0 division error raised in this case. In the previous lesson, I showed you that negatives were possible. 8 mod minus 3 is minus 1. You have to be a little careful with negative numbers. There's two different ways of calculating mod, and you can get two different results depending on which mechanism you're using. I'll show you more about that a little later. The percent operator also supports floating point. Floating point values going in result in floating point values coming out. If you haven't played much with floating point before, you might be a little surprised at the following little piece of math. 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 isn't 0.3.
This has to do with how your computer stores these kinds of numbers and the floating point standard. Mod on floating point has the same kind of precision problem as this addition example I just showed you. Little inaccuracies sneak in. You should always be cautious with floating point, and this is why you should never use floating point values to store money. These kinds of errors accumulate over time. Python has a class called decimal, capital D, inside of the decimal module. It has arbitrary precision and doesn't have this problem. I'll show you more about these later. There are two ways of doing modular arithmetic in Python, the percent operator and inside of the math library, fmod. Generally, it's recommended to use the percent operator when dealing with integers and the fmod function when dealing with floating point. Remember how I mentioned earlier that negatives are a problem? It turns out that percent for integers and floats and fmod calculate negative modulus differently, and so you'll get inconsistent results. Here's a large exponent, and here's the same using the percent operator. You have a significantly different value showing up there. This problem with negatives that I've shown you isn't just within Python, it's also between different languages. Not all programming languages calculate the negative modulus the same way. 8 mod minus 3 in JavaScript is 2. In Python, the same calculation is minus 1. There are two common ways of calculating mod. Here's how Python's percent operator does it. The remainder is calculated as a minus n times the floor of a divided by n. Here's an example. 13 mod 12 is 13 minus 12 times the floor of 13 over 12, or 13 minus 12 times the floor of 1.083. The floor of 1.083 is 1, so you end up with 13 minus 12 times 1, which is a remainder of 1. Now let's do that again with the negative number. 8 mod minus 3 gives you 8 minus minus 3 times the floor of 8 divided by minus 3. 8 divided by minus 3 gives you minus 2.6 repeated, the floor of which is minus 3, giving you 9 on the right-hand side, and remainder of minus 1. JavaScript's percent operator calculates things slightly differently. For the same operation, instead of using floor, it uses trunk. For whole numbers, this isn't a problem. The end result is the same calculation as you saw before. Unfortunately, for negative numbers, it is a problem. When you get to the trunk step of 8 divided by minus 3, the truncation of minus 2.6 repeated is minus 2. This changes the value on the right-hand side, and thus changes the result. In Python, the percent operator uses floor, but the math fmod uses trunk. This is what causes the difference that I showed you earlier between negative values for percent and fmod. You need to be aware of this if you're doing modulus math on negative values. 8% minus 3 is minus 1, whereas the fmod on the same value is 2. This is the same as the JavaScript versus Python example I just showed you. In addition to the mod methods I've shown you so far, Python also has a function called divmod. DivMod returns two values, both the result of the division and the remainder. 12 goes into 13 once, so you get the first part of the tuple, and has a remainder of 1, giving you the second part of the tuple. 5 goes into 37 seven times, and has a remainder of 2 when it's done. The DivMod function is the equivalent of running two different Python operations at the same time. First off, strict integer division expressed by the double slashes, 37 slash slash 5 is 7, and secondly, percent operator, 37 mod 5 is 2, div mod 37 comma 5, giving you the same as these two results, but in one function call. Note that div mod uses the same mechanism as percent, so if you're dealing with negative values, you'll get the kind of calculation that the percent operator does, not the kind of calculation that f mod uses.
In Python, the percent operator is considered to have the same operator precedence as division and multiplication. 4 times 10 is 40. 12 goes into 40 three times with a remainder of 4. 4 minus 9 gives you minus 5. Adding some brackets to the same statement changes the value. Now you're doing 40 mod 3 instead. That's the basic usage of percent and fmod in Python. In the next lesson, I'll show you some common uses of these operators inside of code.